Smiles, everyone. Yes. Smiles. Hey, good morning. It's the Todd Darren morning stream on GetParkDaily.com. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. It's Friday, and I'm very happy about that. How are you? Everyone's pretty happy about it, and the weather's starting to behave a little bit. Well, no, there's more snow today. I'm sorry. But for the weekend, it almost looks like normal weather. I thought we agreed. Let's go to the mountain camp. I thought we agreed right, we're going to lie to them today. And tell them everything is going to be great. Well, you know, and then they're wearing a sleeveless shirt to school, and then all of a sudden I get a phone call going, thanks for giving my kid pneumonia. You stu you really suck. And that, you know, is great. No, it's going to snow today. Rain, sorry. All right, that's I know it's it depressing. Is. All I right, so uh, um, over the weekend, we are planning to have a movie thon in our house. Movie a thon? Movie, movie. A movie a thon. A movie a thon. Movie a thon, yeah. And uh, I was reading this article, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, these are ad libs that were made in major motion pictures. That they kept. Which always amazes me because you wouldn't think when you've got how long it takes to set up a shot and how oh. technical and how expensive. Oh, yeah. And I can't even imagine a director going, you're going to ad lib? You're going to do what? The Godfather. These are so good. In The Godfather, when he says, leave the gun, take the cannoli, that's a made-up line. Francis Ford Coppola didn't write that? Hey, no. Wow. They just said it. And, and if you know the picture, there he is now taking the cannolis. Leave and there's a go. dead guy in the front seat Check shot in the, the head. Cannoli. I can't blame him. Cannolis are delicious. All right. Well, the one I always loved is um, from Jaws, the original Jaws, where Roy Scheider's at the back of the boat, and it's the first time he sees the great white. Well, he didn't have anything to say after that line. They were just going to focus <laughs> on this horrified face, and he right. said, you're going to need a bigger boat. Great line. I think it's just genius. And all these lines are like the, the what the movie is known for. Yeah, exactly. You know? The throwaways that all of a sudden one. this is it. Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> There he is. Do you remember this horrible, memorable and scene? He, it's the first says, time that Clary sees him in the psycho prison. And I quote, A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. And then he did the... <laughs> hey. That was supposed to be a joke. They looked at the face of Jodie Foster. And she was just horrified. She was just shocked and sort of repelled. And Jonathan Demay went... They kept it. I'm keeping it. So it was a joke. <laughs> a joke. All right, another one. Ooh. Okay, Jack Nicholson. Do you remember this? A few good men. Tom Cruise is pressing him on the on the stand really, really hard. Yeah, look at his face. And he was supposed to say, "You already have the truth." And what he said is, "You can't handle the truth." That was awesome. Which is once again epic. Uh, and that's like if you say the film, you have to say that line. Uh, this is a good one. I love this. Goodwill Hunting. And if you remember this, Matt Damon was a co-writer of the of the movie. Um, it had Robin Williams in it. At the end of the movie, he's standing there wearing his Red Sox jacket, and they're basically saying goodbye to each other. Now they went through take after take, and Robin Williams used a different line in every take, and Matt Damon was just like blown away by it because he was like trying to hold <laughs> his crap together. Yeah. Yeah. And so he said, "You son of a bitch, you stole my line." And that was just one of them, and everyone held their breath. And then laugh their butts off on the set. And they went, yep, that's the one we're going to use. That's Isn't that did. amazing? I've heard Robin Williams was notorious for that, too. Oh, though, yeah. He would never stay with the same script. You always had to kind of brace that it was going to be a little But different. when you hired him, you know, you knew what you were hiring. You're getting so, crazy. Yeah, that's what, oh. This really is more of a public service since it we're going is. into the weekend. It is. You might be going out having cocktails, or maybe you're staying up late playing on the computer, or maybe so, you got friends over, but it's going to eventually be like 2 a.m. in the morning and you're starving. I've actually caught Erin doing this, and, and we've gotten home, and I go up and check on the kids or whatever, and she's in the kitchen. I walk back into the kitchen, and I look over, and she's just sitting there, door, freezer, and the fridge open, and she's just standing there staring in, just like, what? What Something has, has to reach out and embrace me. I go, there's some mint jelly in the door. Why <laughs> chow down? Because you're not, you know, cook, especially at that time of night, you don't want to combine anything. Because there's marinating steaks right there. No, right? Well, that would require effort. Effort. And it's 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. And then I say, well, you know, you could have some of this. And you say, no, that's not Because then I actually have to open the bag of salad <laughs> put it in the bowl. So that's kind of what I'm not that feeble. This is for to help people like you. And uh, this is my new series on the reality of late night cooking. Let's watch.
There you go. Really? You think I'm pathetic? This, oh, trust me, the music is awesome, by the way. Uh, number two is the fact that you're going to hit one of those weeks and nights and early mornings, and you're going to go, what did Todd make again? And you really think the dried ramen is going to... And if you do, I want you to take pictures and videos to send them to us. Although I do like the touch of parsley for that debonair kind of... It's like if you lean over the food and go... Like that, which I always find is really annoying... It was delightfully debonair. I was really very impressed. All right, so what do we have coming up? All right, we got to go to Daisy in the Gephardt Daily Newsroom. Lots of stuff happening today. First of all, it's brought to you by Columbus Travel. Only a couple days more to get a hold of their amazing April sale where you will save hundreds of dollars on your vacation. Go to columbusvacations.com. Also by Executive Transportation March, our beloved friend who has the sweetest fleet of Escalades you've ever seen in the world. You can book a trip with him at Executive Transportation, excuse me, executiveutah.com and all Utah Plus plumbing, heating, and air. This is the time to get your air conditioner looked at. Why don't you call John? It's allutahplumbing.com. Daisy, what's going on? Good morning, Todd and Aaron. Happy Friday, everyone. Here's what's making news today on GebhardtDaily.com. The Utah Highway Patrol is investigating a fatal accident which claimed the life of a 73-year-old truck driver outside Cedar City. Investigators tell Gebhardt Daily the accident happened about 3 p.m. when the driver, identified as Morris Carter of Beryl, Utah, veered off the side of the road and then overcorrected, causing the truck to roll. He was pronounced dead at the scene. A Kaysville woman is behind bars, accused of having sex with a teenage boy and supplying him with marijuana. Police say 41-year-old Audra Allen rendezvoused with a 16-year-old at least four times in November and January. Allen's been charged with a third-degree felony and two counts of endangerment of a child. She's currently booked in the Davis County Jail. Playoff fever is alive and well in downtown Salt Lake City as the Jazz prepared to take on the LA Clippers in Game 6 of the NBA Western Conference playoffs. The Jazz have taken a 3-2 lead in the series and can wrap things up with a win in Salt Lake tonight. And now a quick look at your weekend forecast. You can expect scattered showers and even a touch of snow Friday morning, but we dry out and warm up by Friday afternoon with a high in the upper 40s. The warming trend continues a little bit Saturday and Sunday with highs in the mid 50s to low 60s. That's it for now. More headlines 24-7 at GebhardtDaily.com. Go Jazz! There are two ways to fix something. Uh, one is the first time, and the other one is you don't really fix it at all, and there's duct tape on it. We're talking about plumbing here. We're talking about heating. We're talking about air conditioning. We're talking about sprinklers. We're talking about drains. We're talking about faucets that leak and all those different things. When you have an emergency in your house, broken water line, something going everywhere, toilets backing up, that's not the time to go shopping for a uh, plumber. The time is now to remember all Utah plumbing, heating, and air because they can do the entire job for you. And once you have their number on your phone, you can call them as you're knee deep on the hoopla. They will fix it once. It will be done. So go online, allutahplumbing.com. Is that what we're calling the verse sewer pipe now, hoopla? Hoopla. Hoopla. Okay, let's move to something far more delightful and interesting. And that, of course, would be Johnny Mathis. The, the romance king? Oh, you know, he was the most amazing man because he is the voice of romance. This man is 81 years old. He's been touring for 61 years. And uh, what? He's legend. And we actually had a chance to catch up with him and, and, and talk to him a little bit because he's going to be in town this weekend. And uh, have a listen. Look at me. I'm as helpless as a kitten up a tree. Okay, I'd like to tell you that I'm not totally fangirling right now, but I'm totally freaking fangirling because I've got Johnny Mathis on the phone. He, like, called here to us. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Thank you very much. I'm just fine, fortunately. Thank you. Oh, we're so glad. You know, this is an interesting year of ones for you. You're 81. Um, you recorded 71 albums, uh, and you've been uh, performing now for 61 years. When you look back, does it seem like a wild stretch of time, or does it seem like it went by in a heartbeat? Well, let's see now. Uh, it feels very, very much like a very long time, uh, but and since I'm doing the same thing that I was doing when I was a kid, uh, it doesn't seem strange to me. It seems familiar, but it also is uh, kind of, 
I kind of wonder how long it can go off. <laughs> I, I signed my contract with my record company when I was 18 years old, and <clears throat> and I'm celebrating my 82nd birthday, and I'm still with the same record company, which is amazing. Wow! Uh, yeah. But I'm just uh, I'm just absolutely amazed uh, at uh, the longevity of of my career. Yeah. That does bring up a good question for me. You know, sometimes when we talk to um, recording artists who are just barely hitting big now, it's really fun to ask, yeah. what, did, what did you do with your first big check? When you first got a, a decent chunk of money, did you do something for your folks? What did you want to, what did you spend it on? The first thing I thought about was how can I get my parents and my brothers and sisters out of this tiny little basement flat that we lived in uh, in San Francisco uh -huh. And uh, fortunately, the check was uh, uh, enough money to uh, move us out uh, a little bit closer to absolutely uh, the, uh, the high school that I graduated from. And uh, it was a lovely district uh, out by the beach in San Francisco. And I'll always be grateful uh, that my career started at such an early age and I was able to share it with my mom and my dad. I have to tell you, I was talking to a couple of girlfriends yesterday going, I get to interview Johnny Mathis tomorrow, I'm so freaking excited. And my girlfriend, my girlfriend Janine had insisted that I tell you that she was actually conceived to your music. So <laughs> you apparently are responsible for one of my closest friends. Very, you put that very nicely, thank you. Uh, do you get those comments a lot? I do. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I kind of equate it to uh, my listening habits over the years to music and how it affected almost every aspect of my life. Uh, hearing certain music uh, bring back certain memories, and uh, they'll always be with you. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that we have in our lives, uh, music of all natures. Uh, I grew up, uh, I was very fortunate to go up in San Francisco where I got a chance to meet and uh, study with a wonderful voice teacher. Most kids uh, never get that opportunity because I had no money, and so I couldn't pay her, but I did uh, odd jobs for her. I ran errands for her, and I sat in the room while she was uh, working with her other students, and I assimilated all of the things that she was trying to impart to a lot of these vocal students. So I was very, very fortunate as a young kid to say, to get that image of what I was about to embark on, it wasn't just uh, a lot of fun. It was a lot of uh, a lot of hard work, and uh, for me, it was a uh, it was a life changer. Well, our beloved Johnny Mathis is going to be here, and he's singing at the brand new Eccles Theater, which is absolutely heart stopping. This is going to be on Saturday, April 29th. You can get your tickets at artsaltlake.org. That's artsaltlake.org. Mr. Mathis, thank you so much. This has been such a pleasure talking to you. You're in, you're just amazing. Thank you so much. All right, take care, Karen. Thank you, sir. All right, that's he very, was incredible. Very romantic. I know. It's, it's, oh. I, it was very funny, though, because I, it, there, I don't know how to say it nicely, but I've had multiple people say, yeah, I became impregnated to him. And it's like, that's good. And can you imagine him being the one that they approached with see that? that at the Barry White fan club. <laughs> right. Okay, coming up. Oh, coming up. Um, 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 I don't know which one I want to talk about more. There's so many. Okay. There is actually a country that wants you. There's a country that wants you to move there. And it's a see? nice country. It's a wonderful one. It's coming up next. We're brought to you this morning by Executive Transportation. Elegant service, professional style. Go to executiveutah.com. And All Utah Plumbing. Your home deserves the best. 24-hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com. And by Columbus Travel, the best travel deals on the planet. Be sure to take advantage of our April sale, columbusvacations.com. Did you know you can catch the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream any time of the day or night on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud, and GephardDaily.com? All right, so i got to tell you, Jap uh, Japan. Japan needs more babies. They need more people. 
I found this amazing. Of all the countries in the world, because everyone's like, no, we don't want well, you. Please don't come. Please don't baby, come. We don't want you. not enough of us. Japan is actually saying, we need, we need immigration. We need more of you. Well, we would like you to come to our beautiful island. Here's some of the numbers that just 40% will be seniors in the year two, uh, two, uh, 2065. Forty percent. Wow, and the rest of the working base has to support that. Right. And at this particular pace, there's no way that's going to happen. There's, there's no way. There's just not enough romance in the world to make the, the them catch up. So basically, what they're talking about is they would need if they were going to sustain their population right now, they would have to, or have the pleasure, of uh, having uh, half a million people every year migrate to their wow. to their country. I would, I would totally relocate to Japan. It's a beautiful country. I like the culture. I mean, the there's culture. so much. Yeah, the, the culture's, culture's incredible. Great. The food. They have trains the that go 200 miles an hour. Uh, yeah, the people are amazing. They take very good care of the environment because now they have to because they're an island nation and they're small. So sweet. But you know the truth, don't you? What? We Nobody wants us. <laughs> we can't migrate anywhere. We had a friend who came back from New Zealand and he had been so in love with that. I'm like... We should go look at that. And right. Todd and I were like so excited and we were checking like immigration information and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, if you're over this age, you can't come here. And I'm like, well, okay, Australia, man. They used to like advertise for Australia. people. Australia. Let's we check Australia. 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 Right? You check if you're yeah. over this age. We so no don't want you. Shrimp on the Barbie for yeah. us. Canada, you can't come in unless you've got a business worth over a quarter million dollars. What? So basically nobody wants us. We have been rejected by entire continents now. Now now they're threatening our health care. What will we do? <laughs> what will we There's do? There's nothing left for us. So if you're thinking that that would be a cool thing and you'd like to go move someplace, go find out why you can't because you probably can't. But you can't in Japan. It's they like you there. It's not smart. I can't. You're going to go by yourself? If you are, you're taking the kids. Okay. All right. That's Okay, see you. I could eat Japanese food all day. Yeah. I could have dim sum. I'm going. Okay. I'm on that. Right. Okay, tell me something good. Now, don't show the picture yet if you would, Brandy, because I want to tell the story first. Everybody's seen those great big Major League Baseball games where the foul ball goes flying or it hits into the stands and people are diving. They're diving, dangerous. Like that, frantic minnows escaping a shark. I that, mean, it's like psycho. That first baseline yeah. is just, if you're sitting up close, man, you, you are in the line of fire, but there's well, you a know, hero. And it's amazing. So University of Florida, they were having a baseball game, uh -huh. same strong arms. And this guy, one of the players, cracked a foul ball that was going at a velocity that you probably can't see outside of like space. And it's heading for the stand and uh, their uh, mascot was standing literally maybe a couple of steps away, and he was looking at Albert, the ball. the alligator. Yeah. And he was looking at the trajectory, looking at the stand, going, oh, crap, that's like a five-year-old child with his back turned. Show the picture. Here's what he did. This is the most epic. Look at that. Look at that picture. Now, oh. here's the classic. The guy who's trying to catch the ball is actually the kid's dad. Not paying any attention to the fact that his son's <laughs> about to get nailed in the head. So the sweet guy, Albert the Gator, leaped him. on the boy and protected him and shielded him. And uh, he took he, a shot to the head. Yeah, he took he? the hot, the shot right to the head, and so he was kind of oh. pretending to reel around and fall down in a daze. Afterwards. And the little boy is so sweet. He gets up and he's like, "Oh no!" And he's trying to do CPR <laughs> on on Albert. And it's the cutest thing And meanwhile, ever. Dad's still leaning over looking like, for the ball. where's the ball? Why did it right. happen? That is but, so funny. But that was like, A, the most classic picture ever, but B, just oh. the fact that this mascot was like tracking this thing going and then leaped to save the baby. It's like one of those slow motion movie things where you go, no! Oh. And who knew Furbies could be so uh, so helpful? Endearing. So adorable. <laughs> I love you, Albert. All I think right. you're so, wonderful. Um, Thank you. So let's talk about there's a new app. This is huge. Okay, so for a lot of people, uh, and this is, I can't begin to understand. I've worked with refugee families before. Todd and I have worked with a lot of them that came to our kids' school. But even when you bear witness to what they've been through, to, to come here, there's no way we can understand this in a first world country. I, I don't can't. think you can understand the, the effects that they had at their home, mm -hmm. the traveling to get to another place, and then the travel, and all the trials and tribulations that happen, and in some cases near death, and or death we for have family no, members. No, no, I concept of that. But now they've got something that might help. Well, this is wonderful. This is the thing that just astonished me. If you think about it, technology is a—it's your lifeline now. And for a lot of these people, they came from middle class backgrounds, or, or at least had access to smartphones, to cell phones. And so this is the way they communicate, and this is the way they survive. So the UN Refugee Agency thought, what if you could walk a mile in a refugee's shoes? and understand what they go through. So what they did is they created an app that 
is absolutely astounding to me. It takes over your phone's operating system and it goes into the voice of one of the many refugees who went through their journeys and had told these to the refugee agency. What? And so what happens, it's called Finding Home. It was launched this week and it puts you in the shoes of different people. For instance, there's uh, a teenager that I was following the other day to try it out. And you literally see text coming up from a friend saying, look, you've got to get out of here. Um, something's happening. Did you, did, you see the, did you see the bombings? Did you see the news? And it talks about it's not safe. You have to go. You have to run now. And you're seeing this texting going down and you're like, and your heart's pounding. Like right, literally it's right. happening to you. And so you see the communication of this teenager teenager as she's going from place to place going where's my mom where's my dad I've got to go find my brother oh in my school gosh. and they're going through this stuff because the refugee stories that they tell are they're beautiful they're very personal and they're very frightening and it's true that a lot of it is very of course it's really dark because right. they have to stay to true life experiences right but the cool thing is especially following this teenager there's so many uplifting things about this people that they meet there's one woman she meets who's a single mom and she says you could, why don't you spend the night here and she gives the girl her bed and sleeps on the floor oh. and there's another place where there's a group of travelers and they say look we're going to give you all the money we have left here in this in, in this currency oh. and we're going to check on you and when you get to when you get to Canada will you please call us and we'll be there for you we'll be glad to help you oh, so please. you see these amazing stories of all the terrible things they go through and the insurmountable odds of finding safety for your family but you also see where people did reach out and, and how it saved them and I, th I love this idea because I think once you understand right. the journey right. and you understand the people and it does come down it to one-on-one. On one. So it really does come down to one-on-one. On one. It's it's not a you know big fostering thing all the time. Sometimes it's just a connection that someone has, and that they can help another family and so on and so forth. So so I think that's just. I would like a dollar from you because I got through that whole story without crying. You're crying right now. No, I'm not. So early in the show, and yep, she cries. She was a really this cute a, teenager. This, I'm used to this. Okay, <laughs> so she watches a Coke commercial and she cries. So. Just well, it had the little polar bears in it. They're just new with us. Todd and Aaron were married forever. I mean, forever. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, for honey. Forever. Okay, Um, i got to share this. I know you don't want to. But I found this. Do you remember the, the don't don't go yet. Do you, you remember the hospital when I had the thing? Which procedure? Oh, yeah, yeah. The okay. back. The, okay. the fatty right. lumpectomy. Right. Uh -huh. right. So you're going to not like it for some reason. Um, and that's because this was taking, uh, taken back in a time that um, you were a little heavier. Oh, man, I was 60 pounds overweight. Yeah. That's before still I had my the bioidentical wife, hormones, by the way. Still my lovely wife. I was gigantic. So All right. this is in the hospital room. I'm getting ready to go have the stupid thing, like brain taken out or something. And um, it, well, it was your fatty lymphoma. Okay, just listen carefully to this. All right, so uh, this is Todd. I'm at Lakeview Hospital with Aaron. Uh, I'm going to have a procedure done. But a procedure. A procedure. It's not a tumor. One of the funniest things, though, that's keeping my spirits up is that chair. And I will now have Aaron demonstrate why. Please don't make me do this. Aaron, do it. Delicately. Either way. <laughs> you know, so it doesn't really matter if you pull off like that, or you're trying to ease into it thinking, oh, that way the air won't do anything bad. It'll just be like, yeah. And this is without pain medication. I hate you. <laughs> rich oh <laughs> it was the worst oh. chair and you could hear it from outside in the hallway because i saw a nurse <laughs> flip her head around and go what was that and i'm like okay. that was so funny you're, no your face is the funniest part of that whole thing oh my gosh i couldn't stop laughing socially inappropriate house oh, chair. Man. thank you todd all right uh, coming up coming up coming up we are oh let's talk about um Christopher. Oh, this is so important. Okay, uh, we wanted to thank you for being such an important part of the show and how, how much you guys have embraced us over the last couple of months. 
which has been crazy, over a million impressions, which still weirds me out. But um, so we wanted to say thank you. Christopher's Prime Steakhouse is, it's like the ultimate thank you. So we're gonna send you and three of your friends or your favorite people to dinner. Um, you can have a wonderful night, relax, fulfill all your social obligations, have a great chat, no bill at the end. And then we're gonna have you driven back and forth from executive transportation. Oh, so nice. you don't have to drive, you don't have to find parking, but how you do don't I, have to do anything. How do I win? Well, if you're watching this here on Facebook, there's Gephardt Approved on Facebook, Gephardt Daily on Facebook, and also the Todd and Aaron page on Facebook. You can comment underneath this show anywhere you like. Just like the page, comment, and share, and you're automatically entered, and then we'll draw a winner next week. All right. This is going to be epic. I'm so jealous for this. Coming up, we've got a story about Adam Sandler that is going to blow your mind. It involves the word billions. And it's next. Merit Medical. Why work for fast food wages when you can start at Merit for a whole lot more? Merit Medical. Great products, great people, a great company. Learn more at merit.com forward slash careers. The law offices of Robert J. DeBry and Associates with offices in Salt Lake City, Sandy City, and St. George. Check them out at robertdebry.com. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is actually available anytime at gepharddaily.com. Just click on the Todd and Aaron page. All right, there's a new rule in town. Not a sheriff, just a rule. And All right, you, you'll see that this weekend when you go out. You know, the Utah State Legislature, I think they passed some really good stuff. We have a budget that is, is admired across the country. They do very, very well on a lot of interesting things. But every now and then, you get these rules that you're like, We don't get it. Liquor why laws. would you have passed that law? What, what would right. even be the so, point? So, let's go through the point. Is They took down the Zion Curtain, which they made people put up at pretty good expense. So it hid... So it hid any bar tending activity. Evidently, this makes you thirsty for alcohol. So okay. anyway. So this is what they've come up with, and I'm not sure I understand why. Do you want to show the picture, Brandon? Because yeah, go ahead. Because from now, now on, bars are legally required to post a sign that says, this is not a restaurant, it's a bar. <laughs> and restaurants are required to post the following <coughs> sign that this is a restaurant, restaurant not, not a bar. bar. Now... I'm not sure why that was important. Do, what happens if but they, they sell both? But they estimated, because of the signage and the changing and all the swapping in and out and everything, this is over $250,000 cost for bars and restaurants in for, the state of Utah. For two signs? Well, no, but they have to swap everything out and they have to sign, they have to fill out the forms that's stating that they did it and that all this stuff is in compliance and there's fines if you don't have the sign up. But I'm back to wondering why. That was necessary. Because you go and you sit down and you say, I'd like a steak. And they said, we don't have steaks. We're a bar. And then you go, oh, my gosh, I didn't know. But every bar pretty much has a steak. Or not so what do you do with that? You took and then if you're going to a restaurant and you're saying, I, I, I'd like to have a, a Cosmopolitan. And, the, and they have to say, yeah, but we also have steaks. And you go, good, because I was going to order one. I'm, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm not... Yay for us. Maybe someone is smarter, and if you are, if you'd comment and tell us, we'd be happy to know, but I'm not really clear on why this was necessary. I'm going to talk about this because I think it's awesome. I want you to take you back to Blockbuster days. Oh, the big yellow and, and blue, blue sign. And Friday night, Friday night. Be the, kind, rewind. Okay, Friday night, a family would go together and go down and for movie night, and they'd everybody pick out uh, the VHS tape. And they would take it home, and they would watch it, and then you wouldn't return it for a week and a half. Because you keep forgetting. Because it's gone. It's under the couch. The dog chewed on it, and you have to go and do that. But you have memberships, and it was a commitment, and it was wonderful. And then the people actually met each other and got married based on what section of the story you were browsing in. See? Which was kind of cool. So $6 billion in uh, annual revenues back in 1989. That oh, was it, was, it was a juggernaut. It was everything. Yeah. That was basically the peak yeah. for, for them. And then they closed like four billion stores. They closed all the stores. Redbox much. wasn't helping. And then all of a sudden, all the new streaming services Netflix. like Hulu and Netflix came on. Netflix and then it was like, kicked its butt. Yeah. And let me do this because Netflix came in. So you were Netflixing and chilling, right? Instead of um, blockbustering. And they didn't really have an expression. They should have. It might have helped. Guess where Blockbuster is still thriving? No, there's no way it still exists anywhere. It is still thriving. Really? And it's yeah. not like in Texas. No. It's in Alaska. No. Blockbuster is still open in Alaska. Yeah, they've got these stores. You go there on a Friday night and it's like old school. And everybody's there. Really? And everybody's getting the VHS and the DVDs and all this stuff. Mostly the DVDs now. Yeah. But uh, the, the, so it, the stores are really busy. And the reason is, is because uh, uh, satellite is really expensive in Alaska. 
Good point. And you're not cabled. Oh, yeah. Because you're that's living a really out, good point. you know, you're hanging out with a moose. Yeah, they're not running a lot of cable in some so, of those areas. So the streaming, the streaming is really expensive. And so, I didn't even think of that. So they've decided that, you know, they're going to save a bunch of money and they won't stream movies. And they'll just do this because they charge it per minute. Well, I'm God saying. bless Blockbuster then because Buster. seriously. I think that is so cool. In Alaska. It never would have occurred to right? me, but you're right. I mean, just because of, right, the, the uplink in the satellite would be so ridiculously expensive. Okay, I want you to blow my mind. I want right. you to, to blow everybody's mind because the Adam Sandler thing. Well, it's interesting because we talked about basically the past, which was Blockbuster and those old video stores. And then we talked about the future, which was Netflix, which essentially crushed everything. And uh, you, originally, Netflix just basically stream build, you know, stream movies. Right. But then they started coming up with original content and original programming. One of our favorite shows, Santa Clarita Diet with Drew Barrymore. It is, the, by the way, it is the funniest, funniest show. It's only got one season. We binged watch it, and then we almost wanted to jump off a bridge because there were no more shows. And because Netflix is ridiculously wealthy now, they put a lot of money behind doing really good products. I mean, making you know, right. this, this they, stuff beautiful. And they also buy other products and bring them into the Netflix family Basically, and stuff. Basically, so, because they essentially bought Adam Sandler. They did. They bought him. And now, let me explain how. Let me say one thing. This is after a series of like six horrible movies. Movies. Oh, do you remember Ridiculous Six? It got zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Z Nothing has ever gotten, gotten zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. All right, now, ever. now continue. Well, so here's the deal: they inked a deal with Sandler in 2014 for four original movies, and then they expanded the deal to include four more, and then it also included basically his entire package, all of his movies, all of the shows that he'd ever done, so you could access all of this stuff. Yeah, this is a guy who hasn't put out a good movie in a long time. Since the launch of The Ridiculous Six, Netflix members have spent more than a half a billion hours what? watching Adam Sandler films. Now, you heard me correctly. Let me explain that. <laughs> that is more than 57,000 years spent watching Adam Sandler movies. Who's laughing now? I mean, I, 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 zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Zero percent. Can and you so imagine what they are, what they're paying him now? So they got eight. They have eight more. Eight more movies. Half a billion hours just watching Adam Sandler. Mind blown. Sorry, it is totally <laughs> mind blown. That is amazing. Oh, by the way, I, I did want to mention, I got a lot of questions yesterday when I told you about my procedure. Oh, no. At Enlightened Laser, and Todd doesn't have his ear plug, so he, oh, this wait, isn't going to help on. him. I can find But him. really quickly, if Hang you on. had didn't hear about it. Hang on, let's just get it's, something it's, here. it's a laser-directed procedure called vaginal rejuvenation, and it is amazing. La, 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 it's painless. La, 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 it only takes half an hour, la, 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 and it's it's like a slam dunk because we have so many kids here in Utah, and, and to have to have everything recovered and and remove the laxity and all those things, and and to have it for such a great price. There's not a husband in the world who's going to tell you no on this one. But if you want to know more, you can go to Enlighten Laser um, or EnlightenLaser.com. It was awesome. Really? You found them? Enlighten Laser. Just talk to Dr. Molly. She'll take care of you. Did it? All right. Are you done? I am. Okay. So anyway, um, we, we saw this the other day. Uh, Kenny. Kenny G. I kind of feel like we have a relationship with him. We though. do. We do. Because we, we did a very private uh, performance with him uh, years, like when he was like top of the charts. Well, we were raising money for Kissing Cares for Kids, which was our children's charity at the time. And we had a couple who called in and they said... If Kenny G would give us a private concert, and he said, obviously, the rest of the radio audience can listen, but if you'd give us a private concert, say our names, um, and then play something for us, we're sitting in our hot tub. It's like and, 10 grand, wasn't it? Oh, it's insane. Yeah, and so he said, Kenny, could you do that? He's like, yeah. So we called him, and evidently we have naked pictures of him. So, so. He, so he warmed up, he played, and it was heart-stopping. We were all just listening like this, because it was amazing. He played three songs. There was only like 60 people, and so there was no microphones. There was no, He could just talk to you like this. It was really cool. Gorgeous. It was really intimate. Alto sax. I think it was an alto sax. Uh, alto sax that he pulls out and he has this cool trick that he does and a lot of musicians who play horn and stuff can do this but you carry a, a, a note and at the same time you're breathing so it never the tone I don't have stops. that level of coordination he, he went for to impress us I think he went for three minutes and we all thought he dead he was dead <laughs> but he wasn't he was just doing it so anyway 
And, Evidently, and, he carries his, his his instruments everywhere he goes. Well, of course he would, because you either have to practice or you're performing. I mean, this is basically his his third arm. And may I say thing. that Cindy Lauper saved uh, people on a on a plane in a in a concourse once when it was Argentina. all delayed, and they were all ma- and she got on and took the microphone, just singing. Girls just want to have fun, and the whole audience joined in on the ca- in the cabin, singing it in Spanish. It was really cute. Well, so fun. here, so bringing us back to cu- current day. Yes. Uh, Kenny G's on a flight on Delta. And the pilot comes over and says, I'm sorry, we've got an hour and a half delay. Oh. Can't get off because you know, oh. we're already out. If like, only we sit. had a famous artist on the board. And the hearing plane. the collective groan from the cabin, Kenny G actually did stand up and told the flight attendants, I've got my sacks. Would you like me to do something? And these being the cool flight attendants went, yeah, are you kidding? So he warmed up a little bit, and he actually went out there. He stood in the aisle, pulled up and all the curtains so have? everyone could yeah. see it all the way down. Yeah. Yeah, can you guys show this? And he played for them. He's... Every phone is out recording that, this. That is the best, best sax on an airplane that's ever happened. <laughs> Get it? Because it's... I got to go. Todd and Aaron, Morningstream, GetPartDaily.com. Go back to Kenny. Sorry. Apologize. Mom. Thank you.